the 10th edition of the Big Bash League kicked off last night. Now, the opening match was between Hobart Hurricanes and the Sydney Sixers. But we're not here to talk about the match. We're here to talk about the new rules that have been introduced in the, this particular season of the Big Bash. Now, there are three rules that we really need to know about. The power surge, the X factor and the bash boost. Now, we'll talk about these three rules and we'll try and see how they played out in yesterday's opening fixture. First of all, the X factor. Now, this rule states that uh, at the 10... 10 over mark, each team can decide to substitute one of their players for the 12th or the 13th member that has been named on their team sheet. Now, this is can be used by the teams as a strategic advantage in particular games when they want to introduce a particular style of bowler or a batsman in place of someone that is there in the current 11. Unfortunately, yesterday, in yesterday's match, we did not see this rule being played out as neither of the teams opted to make use of this particular rule. But I'm sure going forward in the tournament, as teams start to get a hang of this particular rule, this uh, will start coming into play and teams will start using this as a strategy to beat their opponents. Now, the second rule was the power surge. Now, the power surge basically bas uh, states that there is a 6-over mandatory power play in T20s. Now, the power surge breaks that 6-overs into two different parts. The, four, the first 4-overs will stay as is. Meaning, when you're batting, uh, when you're batting, the first four overs will remain as the mandatory power play. However, the next two overs, the batting side has the option of opting that uh, those two overs at any given time post the end of the eleventh over. So it's no longer that all six power play overs will be done at the start of the innings. It is now broken up into two uh, into two parts: four overs at the top and two overs at the discretion of the batting team who can opt for it at any point post the 11th over. Both teams did that uh, yesterday. Hobart Hurricanes did manage to score more runs, but that was a strategic advantage that they used in this particular match. Now, uh, the third and the final change in rules that has be, uh, been brought in into this season's Big Bash is the Bash Boost. Now, generally what happens is when a team wins a match, they win both uh, they win all the points that are up for grabs and the one who loses does not get any point. But with the introduction of the bash boost, now the rule says that you get three points for winning a particular match, which Hobart won the opening match, so they got their three points. But one additional point will be awarded to that particular team who at the end of 10 overs is ahead. So for example, yesterday, uh, Hobart Hurricanes scored X number of runs in their first 10 overs. Sydney Sixers, although they lost the match, but they were they had scored more number of runs in the 10 overs in their batting innings when compared to the Hobart Hurricanes. So they were awarded that particular point. Now, if you look at the table, the uh, Hobart Hurricanes have three points from one game, but the Sydney, Sydney Sixers, despite losing their opening game, have one point on the board because of the uh, big bash boost uh, points that was uh, introduced. So, the three new rules in action, some hits, some misses, uh, only time is going to tell how they are going to play out in the long run and whether teams are going to be happy with it or, I don't know, these rules to me seem that they are again pushing the boundaries of bat versus bowl. It is uh, favoring more the batsmen uh, of the teams rather than the bowlers. So let's see as the season progresses how these rules play out and how the teams enjoy it.